Chapter 8, Different Smells. We can't go and leave her here. Amalia wasn't sure what would happen now, but leaving while her grandmother's body was in the hospital did not feel right. No te preocupes. Don't worry, her father said. It's all taken care of. Taken care of. It's okay, mejita, was all her mother could say as she wrapped her arms around Amalia while they walked out of the hospital. They had stayed in the hospital for what seemed like a very long time, but it was still twilight as they drove home. It was a long drive, but it felt as if they would never arrive. When they finally did, Amalia's mother suggested that she take a warm shower, drink some milk, and go to bed. It's dark out. It's so dark outside. Amalia was looking out of her bedroom window when her mother entered. There's no trace of the moon and not a single star. Come, get into bed, said her mother. At that moment, her father also entered the room, and they tucked her in together, something they had not done in years. Her mother held out a cup of tea. Tómatelo, tómatelo, she said, encouraging Amalia to drink the fragrant combination of manzanilla y tila, and waited until she drank it all, hoping the chamomile and linden blossoms would help her relax. Abuelita used to give me this. Amalia could not finish the sentence. Si, mi hijita, tómatelo. Both her parents repeated as they stayed with her, one at each side of her bed, until she finally fell asleep. She did not wake up until late morning, and she felt totally exhausted, as if instead of sleeping, she had been running for hours. Mommy, she lay in bed, calling out, but not wanting to get up. Mama! She wished she were still asleep and that someone would wake her up and tell her that yesterday had all been a bad dream. Abuelita cannot be dead. It is a mistake, she kept thinking. Mommy will come in and tell me everything is all right. ¿Cómo estás, hijita? Only her father was at home, and he had come when he had heard her call out. He gave Amalia a long, warm hug and encouraged her to get dressed and come down. A few minutes later, he came up to her room again. You need to eat, he insisted as he led her to the brunch he had prepared. Stop poking at your food. Eat something, hijita. Her father was also staring ahead and could have been talking to her or not. Amalia kept finding it impossible to accept the truth and certainly did not feel like eating. Okay, she murmured as she kept moving the food around on her plate. It seems impossible that everything had changed so drastically. Their abuelita would never be there for her anymore. As soon as you are ready, we will go to your grandmother's house. That's where all the family is getting together, her father said, trying to force a smile. But Amalia could see there was a great sadness in him. We're here. Her brother, her father broke the silence of the ride, and Amalia suddenly realized they had arrived at Abuelita's large two-story house. Amalia felt as if she were in a totally different place. It had been less than a day since she had driven home with her parents from the hospital, and yet it seemed as if her whole life had changed overnight. Let's go inside now. Her father put his arm around Amalia and pushed her a little as he realized she was not moving toward the house. He continued holding her as they walked up the few creaking steps to the porch. There were a lot of people inside the old house, all of whom seemed to be talking at the same time. Her grandmother always had nice music quietly playing in the background, music that always seemed to soften what was said. Now, with no music, even though people were trying to speak softly, Amalia felt there was a lot of noise, more than she had ever before experienced in that house. We must be thankful that she died so peacefully and didn't suffer, Amalia heard her mother say as she hugged a tall woman dressed in a black and wearing higher heels than Amalia had ever seen. Without makeup and with red swollen eyes and disheveled hair, 
the woman did not look like the pictures in the family album or the photograph her mother kept on top of her dresser. But nevertheless, Amalia realized she was looking at Tia Amalia, her mother's sister after whom she had been named. The sisters had initially looked composed as they made an effort to remain calm, but suddenly they embraced each other, crying. Ay, Malia, Malia, her mother kept repeating. Ay, Rocio, mi hermana, was the reply that followed each sob. As Amalia observed her mother and aunt crying in each other's arms, they seemed to become younger and younger, as if through their tears they were being changed into the two inseparable little girls her grandmother had always talked about. Amalia was fascinated by the transformation. From the moment she had seen her at the hospital, her mother had seemed very strong and in control. She had hugged Amalia for a long while but then turned to her husband and began to talk about making the funeral arrangements. Only for a moment had she seemed about to break down. While she held on to Amalia's father, saying, Tonio, ay, Tonio, how could this happen? But when a nurse came in to tell her that the hospital's director was ready to speak to her, she pulled herself together again and went out with the nurse. Amalia stayed with her father while her mother spoke to the hospital director and then went to make all sorts of calls, first to her brothers and sister and then to other relatives and some close friends. Her mother had become almost like a robot, working faster and faster as if she were wor- stuck as if she were stuck in high gear. We will have the funeral next Monday, as soon as the family's all here, Amalia's mother had announced on the drive home. I just talked to Amalia and Manuel. They will call Patricio. These were the only words she said during the ride home. Although she had sat in the back seat with Amalia and had held her hand during the entire ride, when they'd arrived home, she remained calm and seemed more concerned about Amalia's feelings than her own. But Amalia felt that with each moment, her mother became more distant and withdrawn. Now, in her sister's presence, she had finally broken down. But she did not continue looking at her mother and aunt for too long. More people kept dropping in, and they all seemed to want to talk to someone. Each person who arrived would start the same process of questions and answers, which Amalia did not want to hear over and over. Antonio, ¿dónde está Amalita? Where is my niece? She heard a tall man wearing faded jeans and cowboy boots ask her father. He was taller than everyone else in the room, and he tried to coax a smile into his face, just as Amalia's father had done. While he added, she must greet her Theo Manuel. Amalia felt intimidated by this large man with the deep voice. She wanted to turn around and find a place to hide. But this was the son Abuelita was so proud of, the son who had been willing to return to Mexico to save the family ranch. She made an effort to give him a shy smile in response, but somehow she could not control herself anymore and broke out crying. Theo Manuel, Theo Manuel put his arms around her and gently moved her from the crowded living room into a quieter spot in the dining room. I know you were the apple of her eye. She was so proud of you, and you gave her so much joy. This is what you must think about now. Amalia heard the gentle words spoken in the deep voice, but she could not truly register their meaning. Abuelita was gone, forever. What did anything else matter? She stared out of the window as a light rain began to fall. Every minute, there were more friends and relatives in the house. I own taxi in el driveway, she announced, not sure if anyone had heard her. A taxi, w- a taxi was idling outside the house, and a tall man and the taxi driver were standing next to it. It looked like the driver was demanding something from the man. Someone is in the driveway, she said, and motioned to her father, who was already headed toward the front door with his wallet in his hand. Her, t- her tío Patricio and her tía Graciela 
had just arrived in an airport taxi with Amalia's cousins, Julian y Lucia. He wouldn't take a credit card, Tio Patricio explained. Her father made sure that Amalia greeted them, but she was relieved when after Tio Patricio and his family had kissed her, they all rushed to be with Tio Manuel. The two brothers held each other in a tight embrace, and Amalia could see they were both weeping. The light rain had now become a storm, and as the water poured over roofs and trees, neighbors came pouring into the house. It seemed as if each one was bringing more and more food. Enchiladas, tamales, frijoles, arepas, arroz con gandule, and arroz con pollo. Food as diverse as their neighborhood. Someone had put a large pot of menudo soup on the stove. New smells from all the food filled the house. So different from the sweet smell of taffy she remembered so well. To Amalia, it seemed impossible that little more than a week ago, she had been pulling the delicious melcocha with her buttered hands, while her grandmother's favorite songs played softly, sharing the joy of making the dark honey turn lighter and lighter, and feeling the satisfaction of having created something, even if that something was only pieces of candy placed on wax paper. Trying to recover that moment, Amalia went into the kitchen, where she saw the embroidered kitchen towels that her grandmother always kept so neat, lying wrinkled and scattered on top of the table. Their different colors and the days of the week, lunes, jueves, domingo, martes, all mixed up in no order. Nothing will ever make sense in this house anymore, Amalia thought. She felt the pain of her loss with the full realization that everything would be forever different. It hit her almost like a punch, creating a sharp pain in her chest and a feeling that she could not breathe. She ran out of the kitchen, where she had spent so many hours with her grandmother, onto the back porch and could not stop crying. She felt no comfort from seeing that others also felt pain nor could their nice words console her. She felt awful, and no matter what happened, the feeling only became worse. While so many people had gathered in her grandmother's house, all trying to share feelings and offer support to one another, Amalia felt as if no one could ever understand her or share her pain. What she was feeling was hers and hers alone. It was her life that did not feel right anymore her life that would have a huge void from having had her grandmother taken away from her.